Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how you should structure your resume when you are applying for trading or software engineering roles in HFTs or hedge funds. Most of these tips also apply when you are applying for big tech firms like Amazon, Microsoft, Meta or Google. And it also does not matter whether you are from a tier one, tier two or tier three college or whether you are pursuing from your degree from India or abroad. Most of these things will apply in, will apply in general to everyone. So the things which I'm going to discuss here are actually my opinions, like the things which I have learned after spending five years in the software engineering industry. I have given a lot of interviews at HFTs, hedge funds and big tech firms. I have also cracked a lot of them. I have interviewed a lot of candidates from top tier colleges as well. I have actually uh, I have also interacted with a lot of recruiters, hiring managers and senior engineers who have been closely inter involved in taking interviews. So these are all my learnings which I'm going to discuss here. You are absolutely free to follow these. You are absolutely free to discard all of these. So the resume which I'm going to discuss here is actually my brother's resume. He is currently pursuing his BTEC from a tier 3 college. He's in pre-final year and he made this resume when he was applying for internship roles at HFTs and hedge funds. And he applied at like he applied at HFTs in India and outside India as well. And he also did manage to get interview calls from most some of these. So I think he I mean his resume format was good. Um, as like he did get interview calls, so I think his, it was good because he was from a tier three college. I mean, getting interview calls is very tough for those guys because usually IITs are giving much more preference than any other college in HFTs. And now I will tell you like the things which he follow and you are again, as I said, you are absolutely free to follow or discard these. So let's jump into it. So this is how his resume look like. He follows a two column template. Like some people prefer to follow the single column template, but you are free to follow any one of those because I mean, I personally have used both of the templates like the single column template resume and the two column template resume. And I never faced any issue due to this templating of my resume. I mean, I, as I said, I have got a lot of calls from big techs and HFTs and I have cracked a lot of them as well. Now, one thing to notice that if you are in college and your college proposes some particular resume format then i think you should actually f adhere to follow that rather than using any random format now the first thing on your resume should actually be your full name uh, your first name if you have a middle name then it should contain the middle name and the last name then it should contain uh, your contact details the contact details should be email id and your phone number some people prefer to prefer to put their residential addresses but i don't think that is necessary you can you should actually skip it now, uh, I have blurred those information here because of his privacy, but again, now the next thing on your resume should be your experience. If you are in fourth year, you are applying for placement. So maybe you have, you might have done some, some internship at some particular firm. So it should describe your work at internship, or if you're an experienced candidate, it should, it should describe your work at your current company and all of your past companies. Now, uh, since my brother, he did not have any experience while he was applying for internships. So he would skip that section. And I think people who are in second or third year of college are absolutely free to skip that section because that is understandable that they do not have any experience. Now I will create a video, a separate video where I will discuss my resume and I will tell, I'll tell how an experienced guy should make his resume. But yeah, let's now stick to college folks. Now then should come your achievement section. Now this is very important when you are, uh, like essentially applying for HFTs or hedge funds because they do give some weightage to your major achievements. Now, the achievement section, what it should contain, it should describe your achievements in top tier coding contests, like the top tier coding contests are Google Kits, Kickstart, Google Code Jam, Meta Hacker Cup or ACM ICPC. It should list your best finishes on coding contests held on uh, online code, competitive coding websites like CodeChef, CodeForces, Hacker Rank. It should list your rating. If you have good rating on websites like Code Forces, Code Chef, like if you are in, if you are basically a candidate master or above it, expert is also good. And it should list your achievements in Olympiads, like some maths Olympiads, physics Olympiads, chemistry Olympiad, astronomy Olympiad. Like most of, I've seen a lot of uh, BTEC folks who have like won gold medals at international maths, astronomy, or physics, chemistry Olympiad. So it should absolutely list all those. You should absolutely list all those things in your achievement section because HFTs give a lot of weightage to them. And it also describes that you are highly skilled. It describes like everyone knows how competitive the coding contests are. I mean, if you are able to achieve a rank under 100 in a contest which is being held globe worldwide. So it means that you are a very fast coder. You are able to compete against the best minds of the world. So it actually shows that you have a competing attitude. You are highly skilled. 
you are able to perform under environment which high pressure because again like in coding contest the pressure is a bit high because you have to be very fast while submitting solution and you should make sure that you should you do not do any kind of error because it gives a lot because error leads to penalties and penalties leads to your ranks going down so let's discuss like my brother he put his achievement in google kickstart he had achieved a global rank 59 out of five four like five thousand participants in google kickstart round edge so this is how you should actually describe your achievement like you received this rank how many participants were there and the year or month when that particular contest was held so this is how this th three things should actually be present in your achieve whenever you are describing any kind of achievement and like he have given a lot of uh, kick google kickstart contest but he only put three where he had like his best finishes then as i said the major con coding contest like the index algorithm is also a very top tier coding contest and he, in that he had actually reached finals so he has mentioned like uh, that he has put his air put that air now in tcs code beta is also a renowned coding contest so he put his achievement there again it describes the global rank which he achieved how many participants were there and when it was held then uh, this we can skip it for now then like he describes his ratings on code forces so whenever you are describing your rating on any online competitive coding website you should actually put your username as well because so that the interviewer if he wants he can actually uh, verify that you actually have that rating so he puts the rating and all the best finishes he had now comes like he uh, worked under the microsoft microsoft engagement program so in case you don't know what microsoft engage program is you can actually read about it online but he worked there so he put that as well like he put the what like when it was held again dates are very important whenever you are putting any kind of experience you should put the time duration when you had basically when you gained that particular experience okay so he put that like in may 2022 he worked for microsoft engage and he describes what he has actually built and if you see here this whenever you are describing any of your project so you should actually try to put the github link to that as well because that actually showcases that you have actually done some work you and it is also available for everyone to see now putting like urls gives a lot of weightage of your projects okay because if you are doing this then it automatically uh, demonstrates to the interview that yeah you have actually done this project you have not done any copy paste because on github actually people can also go and verify your commit history now uh, whenever you are describing any particular experience the way you should describe it or any particular project the way you should describe it that in the way that what you did what were the technologies which were used and what was the outcome of that project and that outcome should actually be measurable like if you did some performance improvement so how much was the performance improvement one percent two percent of you if, if you did some latency improvement how much was the latency improvement maybe one millisecond two milliseconds so it should be measurable the outcome should be measurable don't go in and put some random things now he describes his projects again very important project section should be there on your resume he describes what he did the project when he did it and he also lists the url for those like putting github url i think it is very very important if you're not putting that on your uh, resume then you are like already losing to the candidates who have done that okay because those candidates are actually able to showcase that they actually did some work and uh, you actually basically end up not showcasing that work and as i said project should also be described that way only what was the thing which you did what was the technologies or frameworks which were used and what was the outcome the outcome should be measurable you can read the description in the way which he has uh, the way he has mentioned his project and again when you are applying for hfts or h fund there should be one or two projects in c or c++ as well so my brother he did some c++ projects which were involved around blockchain and cryptocurrencies so he hasn't mentioned him here because it is not his updated resume but yeah he had those things as well now comes your education section now in education section uh, you put your btech degree like uh, when it started when it is going to end your current cgpa till the semester uh, till the current semester which is going on okay these three things should be there now like you can put the class 12 uh education as well like uh when you had it the year you had it and the percentage you scored in that particular exam 
in your board exams but you can also skip it like btech students i think they can put it don't go beyond class 12 i see many people putting class 10 as well i think that is like absolutely unnecessary and if you are a masters candidate then i think putting your masters and btech is enough you can also skip the class 12 because nobody actually cares what you did in class 12 now as i said your link these links are important like you should put your linkedin url if you have you should put your github url you should put your if you have any personal portfolio website you should put that url as well that helps you in ways like uh, your resume should always be one page okay it should be crisp short brief to the point describing your achievements now if your resume is one page you might not be able to describe all your work in detail so again people used to usually put all those details on their linkedin so this way linkedin can help you because recruiters can go on linkedin and check that out again let's say if you end up not getting some particular interview so recruiters usually keep your resume in their system now if they have your linkedin available with them they can actually contact you on linkedin as well like most people most recruiters prefer to reach out to candidates on linkedin rather than directly reaching out on their emails or uh, on uh, their mobile numbers or mobile phones and github showcases to the interviewers that you actually have uh, like some people might be working on open source project so putting github helps there then it showcases that you have experience with using tools like github or and git which are very heavily used in software engineering industry and these come under the category of version control like source control version control and these are like very heavily used tools so putting these things actually showcases that you have knowledge of these things now coursework you can skip this section again like if your resume is going a bit empty you can use put this section to fill that gap but yeah i have seen that a lot of iitians also put the coursework now putting coursework usually helps in the cases where some application tracking softwares like the way they are designed is that they try to search for some particular keywords in the resume to find if the candidate fits to the requirements of the job now let's say if some particular job requires heavy knowledge of data structures algorithms and mathematics now if you have put that under your coursework so maybe ats will see those keywords on your resume and will shortlist you maybe the resume which don't have those keywords those resumes might get rejected but again you can skip the coursework section i used to put this in when i was in college now when as experienced candidate i do not put this coursework section on your coursework section on my resume skill section is very important in skill section you should put the programming languages you are familiar with the frameworks you are familiar with with like the framework by frameworks i mean the some web development framework if you are familiar with or some particular app development or some particular let's say desktop app development framework then there are frameworks around like testing frameworks you have if you are familiar with some particular testing framework like gtest or uh google test or like uh there is this behave framework which is used for functional tests so putting those is good put the databases you are familiar with like the different sql and nosql databases put the like sql uh, then uh put the things related to web like if there are any front end or back end technologies you are familiar with you can put that put the operating systems you are familiar with put the version control systems like git perforce subversion if you are on your resume if you are familiar with it. like these things could should come should actually come in the skill section now here's a point where some people make some mistakes like some people will go and put microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft office in their skill section i think that's absolutely rubbish because you are applying for a job which requires high technical skill sets you know which requires sophisticated people who are able to like you know you have a lot of knowledge of computer science fundamentals and software engineering now what use that like what use a trader or a software engineer will have with microsoft office okay i mean even if you don't have skills around that if you don't know how to use excel if you don't know how to use word it does not matter because it won't be part of your day to day job so that's why don't put those things on your resume it just takes space and i mean in some uh, some actually some i have like seen some interviewers who actually also you know when if if they see those things on your resume they will give you negative marks for that now the tool section you can skip it but you can put it as well it's not again a very necessary thing the tool section might contain the ids you are familiar with by ids i mean integrated development environment and this the tool uh, the version control websites like github jerit or bitbucket if you are familiar with those things you can put those inside the tool section okay now there are some things which i have 
seen like people do and uh, like people the things which the places where people make mistakes like one thing is that some people will make two or three page resume don't do that don't go beyond one page it's it gives a very bad impression now the second thing is that some people can put some objective or aim on their resume like i want to work for a like this kind of organization and want to grow like this in future or things like that i think i have also seen some iitians putting those things i don't know why do they put it if it is mandated by their college and or if you know some senior gave them that idea but i don't think that is necessary i mean you skip that like you will never get rejected your resume will never get rejected if you don't put your objective or aim on your resume okay so i think it's if there is something let's say you want to put something on your resume think about it that if you don't put that thing on your resume would you get rejected if you won't get rejected due to that don't put it okay as i said objective or aim you will never get rejected if you don't put it on your resume then don't put it because those things are unnecessary they just take up your space sometimes let's say there is some particular achievement which you want to highlight so sometimes you know when i am reading a resume i see that okay objective section is here now my mind or let's say some interviewer's mind can go thinking into some other direction and they might miss to read some other sections of your resume so putting unnecessary things like avoid putting unnecessary things that is what i want to highlight and i think that is what i had for this particular video uh, as i said i will discuss how an experienced candidate should make his resume in some next video in future i will discuss my resume there and these were all my opinions as i had already said in the beginning of the video you are absolutely free to you like free to follow them or discard them thank you guys for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time